The Bengals beat the Bills 24 to 18 on Sunday night football to improve to 5 and 3 on the season and yes, they've won 4 in a row. Hi again everyone. I'm James Rapine alongside Elise Jesse here. Welcome into Cincinnati Bengals Talk. What a win. Wire to wire, never trailed. The offense got off to a hot start again. The defense won the turnover battle, forced two turnovers. Another complete team win. Completely. A complete team win. And they looked they look like they're hitting their stride. You know, we've talked about how this team hits their stride in November. They play their best football in November. I'm starting to think that this is becoming a part of their identity as a team. Yeah, I think so. I it just... The wire to wire tonight, it never felt like the game was in danger against the Bills. Right. This wasn't just one of these, t- you know, this wasn't the Cardinals. This, the, over the past two weeks now, they've been in control in games against the 49ers and now the Bills. And let's start with Joe Burrow. Great again, 31 of 44, 346 yards, 44 yards, 340 plus yards passing there. I know I got that right. Two touchdowns. Played really, really well. I was actually really impressed by how much variety there was to his receivers. He really utilized the tight end room tonight. Obviously, we saw the touchdowns with Irv Smith Jr. and uh, Drew Sample, um, and it, he needed that on a night. I noticed, I'm sure you noticed, and maybe fans at home notice this as well, but Jamar Chase, four catches for 41 yards. He had the heating pad on his lower back as well. I don't know if that was affecting him a whole lot in the game, but... I was glad to see Joe Burrow utilize um, more guys than just T. Higgins, even though he had a huge game, and Jamar Chase. You know what? It's because Zach Taylor watches Cincinnati Bengals talk, and he was like that idiot that keeps talking about tight ends at the trade deadline. Let's prove him wrong. And um, uh, no, he's not doing that. But it felt like it he's because your top viewer, your top fan. <laughs> because Irv Smith Jr. A touchdown on the opening possession uh, after uh, having a nice catch. Tanner Hudson mm-hmm. get, catches a, a six-yard reception on third and two on the opening possession. And that wasn't all. Drew Sample putting a grown man on ice skates for a 22-yarder. I mean, this was tight end day. They combined for close to 100 yards. I think it was eight catches. It might have been nine catches at the end of the day. I, I uh, really impressed by them and impressed by that room. And, and I got to be honest, coming into the year, I looked at the room and I was like, okay, it's not a great tight end room, but all of the guys are are good enough at what they do that they should be fine. I expected this more so than no production at all. Yeah. And and so I I think that this could be the trend, not that they're going to combine for 90 plus yards receiving every week, but this little quartet of tight ends that they have could work. I agree with you. I think that as long as they can do good enough to win games... That's fine by me because you know that going down the line, especially with the teams that they're playing, teams are going to try to take Jamar Chase completely away. I don't I don't fully believe that he was at full strength today, and I don't think that's why he had a lot of production today. Mm-hmm. But teams are going to try to eliminate him from the game plan. And when you have other options and they they are good enough to get those touchdowns, win games. I mean, Drew Sample was like barreling through Bills players to get to the end zone tonight. That is super encouraging, I think. Yeah, for sure. And you mentioned other weapons not named Jamar Chase, and he did. I think he hurt his back. I, I'm not trying to speak for him. He didn't talk after the game. Yeah. His back on the deep ball that Burrow got hit on as well. It was like double trouble. And then there was a, a Bills player that was down on the play. So I think it was uh, tonight. And we'll see. We'll see how significant it is, if it's significant. Uh, but T. Higgins, best game of the year. Eight catches, 110 yards on nine targets. He said it's about time after the game, and over the past couple of weeks now, he has a buck 70-plus receiving yards and clearly looks like the Higgins we're used to seeing. Yeah, he, he's right. It is about time because his last 100-yard game was Christmas Eve of last year where he had eight catches for 128 yards and a touchdown, and I think he was going into this season expecting to be extremely productive because obviously it's contract year for him. And players, as we all know, they want to have extremely high productive years because they're trying to earn that money, earn that paycheck, get that coin. So the fact that he was, you know, dealing with a rib injury and not putting up the type of numbers that he is used to putting up, I think it was probably frustrating for him. So it probably, I would think he's finally got that monkey off his back and now he can go forward in the season. Speaking of a guy that got that coin, Jermaine Pratt got that coin this offseason. He got a nice three-year deal with the Bengals and... Well, he just gets the football. This guy, last week, the tip to himself in the red zone, huge 
huge play, uh, an interception that keeps points off the board for the 49ers. Did the same thing here in the end zone behind us or in the red zone right behind us, forcing the fumble. We talked to him. You, you talked to Nick Scott. We'll have both of those here on CBT. But uh, just a heck of a play by Jermaine Pratt. And, again, that swung – all of the momentum because that was a, a point much like last week where the Bengals had outplayed their opponent but if the Bills had scored a touchdown there completely swings things and in the pressure changes the co- the crowd gets quiet and instead GP came up and made a huge play playoff P he's been showing up for a, co- a number of years I mean I swear we we've been talking about this for a, a years mm-hmm. that he put playoff P Jermaine Bratt comes up in huge moments where the Bengals need a stop and in, there's there, there's points that need to be left on the board for the Bengals' sake. And he always has, like, this this knack and this self-awareness to be able to punch the ball out, get an interception, something huge. He's such a difference maker. And I, I think that they were extremely smart to sign him to another contract in the offseason. And someone who's going to potentially get a huge contract in a few years, Cam Taylor Britt. Another interception. Uh, I congratulated him afterwards. I know you talked to him. I congratulated him afterwards. He was like, expect it. Expect it every week. Uh, what was he like after the game? Because now he has three interceptions in the past four weeks. I mean, he was, as you would expect some a player to be, <laughs> and he put up that much production. He was excited. He was happy. I mean, I, I asked him if he thought that the Bengals were the best team in the AFC, and he gave me a look like, come on, what do you think I'm going to answer to that? <laughs> he's like, yeah, of course I'm going to say we're the best team in the AFC. I mean, he's just, obviously, he's playing at such a high level, and for him to play at that high of a level in just his second year under Lou Anarumo is huge because there's so many players that talk about how difficult Lou Anarumo's scheme and his playbook is, and for him to be as smart as he is and is with it and just football smart to be able to pull off the plays that Lou Anarumo wants him to execute impressive last thing and the game was certainly on the line they're up 24 to 18 they get the ball back the bills are hoping to get a stop deep ball to tyler boyd explosive play that's the offense that we remember yeah like that's the offense like oh game on the line that's okay we'll end it and it's not we'll end it all ugly it's oh well you want to guard jamar jamar's maybe a little hobbled t higgins has been dominating oh well we still have a third we have a third guy that we can throw to. That's the offense that I remember. Just the thought that I, I felt like sharing here before we go. Yeah, it, it felt like, I don't want to say vintage Joe Burrow, but it was kind of like vintage Joe Burrow being able to throw those deep shots. And I think when Joe Burrow is playing at 100%, everybody else around him plays better, including the offensive line. I talked to a few offensive linemen tonight, um, Orlando Brown Jr. and Bolson as well. And they were both kind of talking about how their jobs just become so much easier when Joe Burrow is playing at full strength. And I think we're really seeing that now in the, these last, what, three games, two or three games? Yep. We're seeing him at full strength, and it's nice to see. It is. It's nice to see. The Bengals, they're 5-3. and three. They've won four straight. At least had a, a ton of interviews in the locker room from Joe Burrow to Zach Taylor to T. Higgins. I know the T. Higgins one is posted by now. Jermaine Pratt, Nick Scott, Orlando Brown Jr. caught up. There's going to be a ton that are posted here on CBT. So hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and stay tuned because we're bringing you more Bengals coverage. But again, the Bengals, they beat the Bills tonight 24-18. to We'll have more. Thank you so much for watching. For Elise Jesse, I'm James Rapine. And also, he would be so mad if I didn't shout him out. Yeah. Shout out to Andrew Fox Miller. I see you, Fox.